Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. We have uh, a quorum. Uh, it is 10 o'clock and uh, the meeting is officially called to order. Uh, we will start with our Pledge of Allegiance to the uh, US and Texas flags. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, God. is free and just for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to these our Texas one. Okay. We are going to start today with our bingo advisory committee. Trace, your item. Morning, commissioners. Before I begin my report, I would like to introduce you to Veronica Uriaga on the bingo advisory committee. Uh, she wanted to sit in this morning to just watch the process, if you will. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Veronica. Good morning, Commissioners, Bingo Chairman Fields and Chairman. Yesterday, the Bingo Advisory Committee met to discuss several agenda items. The first item being the Sunset Report. <clears throat> First of all, Steve Bresnan informed the Bingo Advisory Committee about the Bingo Interest Group's response to the Sunset Report. One of the many things he touched on was the praise of the staff's involvement along with Commissioner Fields and the Bingo Advisory Committee. The Bingo Advisory Committee supports this assessment that staff and the commissioners do pay close attention to the Bingo Advisory Committee and the bingo industry in general. Tom Stewart with Texas Charity Advocates also spoke in response to the Sunset Report. They also concurred with the Bingo Interest Group with a few exceptions. I'm sure Steve Bresnan and Tom Stewart will be giving their respective group's viewpoints later today. I also personally thank Commissioner Fields, LaDonna, and Tyler for all the hard work and time they dedicated to not only the Bingo Advisory Committee, but the whole bingo industry. The next item was the rules review. The BAC and the industry received the updated rules review from staff on Tuesday, the 4th of June. The rules subcommittee will be reviewing the updated changes and working with the industry and the Bingo Advisory Committee. The staff has generously agreed to have the rules review subcommittee meeting and then a BAC meeting on the 6th of August. Next items are the annual work plan and the BAC end of year report. The BAC presented to LaDonna and staff a draft version of both of these documents, a meeting cycle earlier to better involve staff, commissioners, and the industry. The BAC will have a team's meeting on the 8th of July to approve the work plan and the end of year. This will ensure that the commission will have both of these documents in your packets to review before the August commission meeting. Fiscal year 2025 BAC nominations update. So far, the BAC received 13 nominations form, 13 nomination forms from staff with more to come. The BAC would ask the commissioners to please direct the BAC on the process that they should follow during this new nomination process. The BAC has two questions. Should the BAC conduct interviews of the approved nominees? And also, should the BAC make recommendations to the commissioners of who the BAC recommends to be appointed to the BAC? These two questions are paramount to the new process we are now doing. There were no, there was no, no, no old or new business at the late, latest meeting. The meeting dates for the BAC for the team's meeting is July the 8th, dealing with the work plan and end of year report. Then on August the 6th, at 10 a.m. for the rules subcommittee hearing and at 2 p.m. for the BAC meeting on the same day. This concludes my report and I would be happy to answer any questions. Hey, commissioners, any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Um, 
just just thinking about the process, the, the Texas Administrative Code does allow the BAC to be a resource to the commission by reviewing nominations and interviewing potential members. And of course, it's not a self nominating process, but correct. I've I've always looked to you all as a resource for us, and, and I, I think it's fine if you all would like to interview the the different perspective members and come to us with a recommendation. We, we won't necessarily follow your recommendation, but it's still a resource for us. In, in my view, I'm only one vote out of five. But. Excellent. The BAC just wants to make sure we're following what the commission sets for us to do. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. I welcome y'all's input on the on the members or the potential members and I look forward to hearing what y'all have to say. Excellent. Any other uh, comments, discussion? D does it make sense for us to participate in some of the interviews? I believe it does. OK, well, we can make ourselves available for that should you need it. OK, thank you. Please. OK, thank you all very much. Next item is report on contracts. Angela, your item. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Angela Skybay Sagarba, the Director of Administration. Item three in your notebook is a briefing item to advise the Commission of staff's intent to renew the promotional co products contracts with BHOP Specialty and Sierra Group, the Retailer Bonus Payment Management Services contract with Alliant Insurance Services, the Lottery Drawing CPA Services contract with DK Partners, and the internal control system and related services contract with Elsom Consulting for the terms listed in the memo provided in the notebook. Commissioners have independently confirmed they have no financial interest in these vendors. If you have any questions, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, commissioners, any questions, comments? Okay, none. Ready for item four? Yes. Okay. <laughs> item four in your notebooks is a briefing item as well. This is an interim status update to let you know that the Lottery Operations and Services RFP is continuing to progress as planned. As previously reported, the Texas Lottery sent the RFP to the Comptroller of Public Accounts Contract Advisory Team for review, and the agency has received positive feedback. In addition, the pre-solicitation notice that requires two months of notice window to all vendors has expired on June 2nd. The RFP will be issued soon and posted on the Electronic State Business Daily and the Texas Lottery's websites with copies sent to those that turned in a solicitation notice by the deadline. If you have any questions or comments, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer those. OK, any questions, comments? OK, thank you, um, Angela. Thank you so much. OK, uh, next item is report on lottery operations procurement. Uh, I'm so sorry. OK. Uh, next item, report on lottery sales and revenue, Sergio. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, Sergio Rey, controller for the Texas Lottery. Good. Will Russ, products manager, and I will provide an update on sales through the week ending May 25th, 2024. At the 39 week mark of fiscal year 2024, total sales have reached $6.28 billion. This continues to be an overall 2.6% decrease from last year. The delta from last year's total is now $169 million. As you can see on this chart, the draw sales year to date are at $1.36 million. This is under the sales this time last year at approximately $57 million less. Scratch sales remain lower than from last year by approximately $112 million, but the gap is closing down to a 2.22% margin. This is the revenue perspective through week 39. In the next slide, Will will provide the specifics on the game performance perspective. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, I'm Will Russ, the products manager. 
and we'll be giving a more detailed view of the sales that Sergio just reported on. If we look at this slide at the bottom right corner, you can see the year over year decline of about 169 million or 2.62%. The main contributors to this decline are the national draw game Mega Millions, the in-state jackpot game Lotto Texas, and then also our scratch ticket sales. At our last meeting, the Mega Millions deficit was about 63 million, which included the add-on features. The game had a moderate roll between March 29th and this past Tuesday, June 4th, when the game was hit at 560 million. During this roll, we continued to close the gap and reduce the deficit to about 50 million. Powerball has also continued to sell relatively well since our last meeting, and sales are now positive year over year by about 45 million. The in-state draw game Lotto Texas is down about 56 million. This was expected though, because the game had a historic run last April when it hit 95 million. In good news, it is currently having a solid run and the jackpot is now 24.25 million. This jackpot is relatively high for the in-state game and should yield positive sales results. Our other in-state jackpot game, Texas Two-Step, is slightly down, but this game is also on a solid run with a $1 million jackpot. In the middle of the slide in blue are the daily games, and there's good news to report here as well. Pick three, daily four, cash five, and all or nothing are all slightly up. As I've mentioned at meetings in the past, we are particularly encouraged by pick three sales because there have been declines over the years with players of this game moving to daily four. In conclusion, for the draw games portion of the portfolio, sales are currently down about 57 million or approximately 4%. You can see that number in orange towards the bottom of the slide. I am happy to report, however, that draw game sales were positive year over year for most of the week since we last met. We do still have tough comp weeks ahead because Powerball and Mega Millions both had high jackpots last summer. We will be closely monitoring the roles on all of the jackpot games, particularly Lotto Texas, and will report on sales at the next meeting. As Sergio mentioned, scratch sales are down about 112 million or 2.22%. That percentage is slowly but surely de decreasing through the fiscal year. In February, the deficit was about 3.31%. In April, it was 2.38%. We are moving in the right direction and the hit family of scratch ticket games we launched in early May should contribute to that effort. I've included samples of these great looking tickets with your notebooks. <clears throat> with that, I'll wrap up. Sergio and I are available for any questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Commissioners, any questions, comments? Thank you. All right, we appreciate you. Thank you very much, Will. Yes, sir. Sergio. And I continue yes. with the next item. This is the uh, a high level briefing on the accrued revenues and transfers through April 30th of 2024. This is item number six in your meeting notebooks. Our accrued revenue transfers to the state total $1.264 billion at the two thirds mark of the fiscal year. The foundation school fund has received $1.203 billion with Texas Veterans Commission receiving $15.7 million and the remaining $44.6 million are transfers from unclaimed prizes. In total, the Texas Lottery has transferred $33 billion to the state for education and $239.7 million for Texas veterans. Commissioners, this concludes this agenda item. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, commissioners, any discussion? Next item. The following item is for fiscal year 2025 operating budget. And before you, uh, copies of this proposed budget. The fiscal year 2025 operating budget was developed in accordance with appropriation amounts outlined in House Bill 1, the General Appropriations Act, from the 88th legislative session and adjusted for riders in Article 9 funding provisions. In fiscal year 2025, the agency is authorized for $338,098,234 dollars primarily from the lottery account fund 
5025. The general revenue fund portion is appropriated solely for bingo operations. This proposed budget was developed with direct feedback from the divisions and approved by the executive director. In this slide, it provides a breakdown of appropriated authority as well as the riders and transfer authorized funds totaling 339,267,860. You can also see the distribution by the agency's divisions. This distri distribution follows very similar patterns from our fiscal year 2024 budget. To place perspective on the type of expenditures of this agency, the next slide provides a breakdown by budget categories in the agency's budget. Very notably, the lottery operator and printing categories are more than 50% of our budget. To further compare our proposed budget to the current budget in the next slide, the significant differences are that this budget includes the second year of salary adjustment funds. This is effective September 1. Salaries will be increased by 5% or at least $250 per month, which employees will see on their October payroll statements. The agency will also appropriate an additional, was appropriated an additional $17 million in the second year of the biennium for additional scratch ticket printing. This was an exceptional item requested in last year's legislative appropriations request. And the capital balance transfer is from front-loaded appropriations in fiscal year 2024 for lottery equipment. An estimated unused 170,000 will be transferred for similar expenditures in 2025. And finally, the lottery operator fee funding is based on the percentage of sales fee to the contractor. In fiscal year 2025, the percentage is now 1.9889%, down from last from this current year at 2.0331%. As part of this budget, the distribution of staffing is also noted. The agency is approved for 321.5 full-time equivalent staff positions. The agency has budgeted 317.5 FTEs. The difference is to allow for future allocations as needed and funds are available and to offset with contracted staff augmentation positions which qualify as FTEs per government code 2052. Finally, uh, here are the rider authorities in our bill pattern which are the basis of the amounts in our appropriations and in our budget. And this concludes my summary of fiscal year 2025 operating budget. And on behalf of the agency, I request your approval. Okay, Sergio, thank you. Commissioners, any discussion? Sergio, we know that what you're presenting is um, an amalgamation of just a variety of, of you know, factors and a lot of different folks have provided inputs that you've uh, brought forth and just we're grateful for your detail and hard work and you presenting this. So uh, with that, is there a motion to approve the budget? I so move. I'll second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Sergio. Thank you. It's affirmative. Okay, next item is the strategic plan legislative appropriations request. All right, this is a briefing item. This, the Texas Lottery has submitted the agency's strategic plan to the Governor's Office of Budget and Plan and Policy Division and the Legislative Budget Board, as well as the Lieutenant Governor's Office, Speaker of the House, State Auditor's Office, and State Library, as required by Government Code 2056. A copy of this document has been provided to you on the dais. As discussed in our April Commission meeting, the strategic plan incorporated the agency goals, action items, redundancies and impediments, and supplementing schedules that were presented to you then. Uh, this is part of the beginning steps leading up to the upcoming legislative session and translates over into our legislative appropriations request, which is the second half of this presentation. Because later this month, we expect to receive notice and instructions for the submission of our legislative appropriations request for the 2026-2027 fiscal years. As you're aware, the legislative appropriation request is the agency's initial proposal for our budget in the next biennium. It will be a financial summary of fiscal years 2023 through 2025 with our request for 2026 and 27. 
It will also include any request for rider authority, capital expenditure authority, exceptional appropriation item requests that are over our baseline amounts. We do expect to present exceptional item requests and rider authority changes. Many of these are reflected in the impediment section of the strategic plan and may also present themselves as we continue our sunset review. The Legislative Budget Board has already requested from us a reconciliation of our applications for the current and prior to fiscal years. This is used to determine what will be the approved baseline for the next two years. Gauging from the LAR schedule from two years ago, uh, we expect that at the end of the month to receive our approved baseline amounts. The policy guidance letter from the Office of the Governor's Budget and Policy Division and the detailed instructions from the LBB for, for this submitting the LAR. The deadline for the LAR is also typically in the month of August. Again, gauging from two years ago, we expect and hope to be after our next meeting uh, since this document requires this commission's approval. Uh, in the meantime, we will work closely with you on the development of this document and keep you abreast of its progress. Much more to come in the next couple of months. Uh, this concludes my briefing. I'm available for any questions. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any discussion? Specifically, any comments from our planning committee? Look forward to working with you on that and uh, a lot of work done already and a lot of work to do, but we'll get it done on time. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other comments? None? Okay. Sergio, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Next item is a report on agency sunset review process. Nelda, your item. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, I'm Nelda Trevino. I'm the Director of Governmental Affairs. I'll be providing a brief update regarding the agency's review of the Sunset Advisory Commission's uh, review of the agency. Since your last meeting in April, and as you are aware, the Sunset Advisory Commission staff report on the Lottery Commission was in last month on May the 2nd. Included in your meeting materials are copies of the Sunset Advisory Commission staff report on the Lottery Commission, the agency's May 15th response to the staff report, along with copies of public responses to the staff report submitted thus far to the Sunset Advisory Commission and posted on their website. The next steps regarding the agency's review will be for the Sunset Advisory Commission to conduct their public hearings. At the first hearing, Sunset staff presents its report and recommendations. The agency presents its response and the Sunset Commission hears public testimony and receives additional written comments. At the second hearing, the Sunset Commission considers and votes on their recommendations. The recommendations adopted by the Sunset Advisory Commission will then lead to a Sunset Bill being drafted and filed for the legislature to consider during the upcoming legislative session that will convene in January of 2025. We will keep you advised of the Sunset Commission's hearing dates as soon as they are scheduled. This concludes my report and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, commissioners, any discussion? Elda, good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate all the work that you do perpetually. So thank you. Thank you. All righty. Uh, next item is uh, the. Excuse me, uh, Chairman. I believe we have a couple of public comments. Uh, you are correct. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Bresden and Mr. Stewart, I believe, would like to speak on the item nine. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Steve Bresden here on behalf of the Bingo Interest Group. Um, very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about the Sunset Review with uh, with y'all today. Um, I've uh, been involved with a lot of different uh, Sunset Reviews uh, over the years. Um, staff always does a uh, thorough job um, and uh, acts in good faith has been my experience. Uh, and it's uh, no surprise that over the years uh, we've found some things to agree with and some things to disagree with. Um, I'd like to hit a few of those if I might, uh, Mr. Chairman, without taking too much of your take, time. Take as much as you need. Um, I, obviously, a key issue in the report is uh, the degree of en engagement uh, by the commissioners and the staff. 
I can't speak to the lottery side. I wouldn't purport to. Uh, but on the bingo side, this is the golden era of participation and engagement between the industry and the commissioners. Uh, we've had a chance to meet uh, with uh, each of you, except Commissioner Smith yet, uh, individually. We look forward to doing that at your uh, convenience, sir. Um, and uh, we have uh, frequent interaction with the staff. Commissioner Fields is attending all of the BAC meetings. She's been very responsive and in, including not hesitating, hesitating to say no <laughs> when, when that was the view. Uh, but the relations are excellent and productive. Uh, LaDonna uh, came to a totally new enterprise uh, and uh, has mastered the ins and outs uh, of charitable bingo, which is not a simple uh, enterprise. Tyler got over his hangover uh, from the dental board service uh, rapidly and uh, hit the ground running uh, as well. Uh, so from our point of view, uh, things have been very good. Uh, I was here during a time period when uh, they weren't so good. Uh, and so uh, we've got nothing but uh, praise of, of uh, for that aspect uh, and disagreement with with the report in that regard, at least as it relates to charitable bingo. I, I want to touch base, uh, touch with you on the agency structure, uh, uh, whether the charitable bingo operations director uh, will report directly to the commission uh, or not. Uh, that's a legislative choice. Um, members of the bingo uh, world went to the legislature some time ago. Uh, partly because the engagement from the commission, frankly, was uh, not uh, helpful. Uh, and so we asked the legislature uh, to do that. It is novel. It's, it's unusual. Uh, I don't know that it's unique, but it's, it's unusual among state agency structures. Uh, but I don't see the evil that the staff, uh, Sunset Staff Report is intended uh, to cure. Uh, from the outside, I don't see a lot of resources that are being consumed by that uh, reporting structure. Um, it gives us a feel that the commission's actually involved. These are these are basically free market enterprises with a lot of regulatory intervention, uh, but um, they are not operation of giant a proprietary enterprise like you have on the lottery side. So we think that's completely a uh, justifiable structure and we'll be working with the legislature uh, to retain it. A couple items that we uh, that we support. Uh, we think this agency needs now and has for a long time better technology. Uh, and I'm hoping and I urge you to include in the legislative appropriations request uh, the uh, technology to meet the standards and the uh, proposals that were uh, in the Sunset staff uh, report. At the same time, uh, we'd like to have uh, the BAC uh, be in uh, continuous existence uh, per statute. Uh, we support that, um, uh, not because we don't trust this commission to rely on the BAC and work with it, but previous commissions um, did not. Uh, and there was a gulf there for a time which was uh, not serviceable uh, to anybody. Uh, two more quick things. Um, the licensing, the recommendation regarding licensing of manufacturers and distributors. I'm, I'm afraid the staff may not have thought about what happens if you just pull that up. Uh, bingo is highly regulated. Uh, the products have to be collated and printed uh, and have the serial numbers, the state seal, uh, lots of things. Uh, we're concerned if you take out that regulatory structure that the conducting organizations are going to be left holding the bag uh, to make sure that products that they have are actually actually approved products. Uh, they could be easily forged and there wouldn't be a thing that you could do about it. Uh, I, I suppose law enforcement could do something about it, but you wouldn't have a license to go pull. Uh, they have people to deal with who have a license at issue uh, and who have the expertise to make sure that uh, all of these things are uh, appropriately handled in the stream of, of uh, commerce. Uh, and so we're very concerned that there's no detail or, you know, how would this work? Uh, it's, uh, we're very concerned about that. There's a couple of things in the report uh, that I think are um, important um, omissions. Uh, one is there's a chart on page 10 of the report uh, that, breaks out where the money goes from charitable bingo. And if you'll notice, the biggest portion of that, not surprisingly, is prizes. 
But there's also two categories in there for prize fees, one that goes to the local government, one that goes to the state government. Um, it Prize fees are withheld from prizes. So it looks to me like uh, they have not properly characterized uh, the prizes uh, and showing the prize fees as a separate component from that. Either the chart's wrong or it needs uh, some kind of a footnote or something to annotate that. And we've uh, we've uh, pointed that out to uh, the uh, Sunset staff. Uh, uh, and the other thing is on the lessor structure. Um, I won't get into detail on that. There's a lot of history, but it, it omitted to talk about what we refer to colloquially as the association lessor. If there is a concern with uh, one type of lessor having the ability uh, to uh, charge more rent than another, that that's unequal. The association lessor model solves that problem uh, and it operates on the same level uh, as a grandfather lessor. So um, that's an omission. And, and frankly, people uh, people are doing that. If it meets their needs and their, uh, they want to get organized that way, they, they can do that. Uh, so a uh, couple of omissions, few things we disagree with, few things we do agree with. Uh, we will be engaged uh, heavily in the process. I uh, spoke to Chairman Holland uh, yesterday. Uh, we will be uh, working with staff, Sunset and legislative staff, uh, and we're going to support this agency um, on these items in the manner that I'm articulating right now. I have one final ask. Uh, there's a tendency in Sunset for agencies to do those things that they can go ahead and do that may not be necessary or they may agree with um, or can be done as an accommodation uh, without uh, difficulty. And we had some discussion about that uh, yesterday. And that's fine. I understand that and, uh, and uh, think it's a good practice. Um, on the other hand, where some of these items need legislative approval, uh, we would appreciate the agency taking the view at a minimum that they uh, that you support uh, letting the legislature uh, make those decisions. Uh, there are several of these items uh, that we think the legislature has made decisions on and will in the future. Uh, and we'd uh, if you defer to the legislature, we'd certainly understand that um, and uh, would uh, recommend and request that you do so. And I'm happy to answer any questions or return to my seat. Okay. Um, for Mr. President, is there any comments, discussion? I just appreciate the context you provided. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate Steve, it. Just yes, uh, we are grateful for your attention to detail. We know that your perspectives are, are genuine and and well thought out and, and that for you to come and, and visit with us. Uh, as you know, we're not the deciders. However, we are and do have that level of involvement and we do appreciate your um, comments regarding the current leadership we have with LaDonna that um, you mentioned previous kind of of uh, frustrations with previous leadership and you know uh, someone who's been here for a number of years that had to work through multiple um, iterations of, of trying to find the right uh, leadership um, was something that was definitely a, a very visible struggle and we are very grateful that we do have LaDonna here and she definitely provides a lot of comfort so that we particularly uh, Commissioner Fields um, that Cindy's able to sleep even better at night knowing that you know Bingo's uh, going to be fine so uh, and we're also very grateful for Cindy's leadership and in, in handling um, at the governor's direction, bingo as well. So thank you, Cindy, and thank you, LaDonna. Steve, thank you for your comments. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tom, are you, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Tom Stewart. I'm the executive director of Texas Charity Advocates. We're a small trade association that represents charity conductors, lessors, distributors, and manufacturers. Um, and I will associate myself with 90% of what Mr. Breslin just said. I'll take 10% wiggle room in case we need to back up on something. Um, but 
but in particular on the theme of engagement, uh, my my response to that is uh, it just seems like still waters run deep. I worked at this agency a long time ago uh, and um, have a little bit of an understanding of the work uh, that goes on behind the scenes that that isn't necessarily represented uh, in public meetings. Uh, and it's not been our experience uh, that there's a lack of engagement, uh, certainly by you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Fields, LaDonna and her staff. Um, uh, it, it's it's solid in our opinion. Um, like the bingo interest group, there are things in the Sunset staff that we support, some things that we oppose um, and something that we're, we're neutral, but we do have a point of view on. I won't go through that in detail. I think you have the letter that we provided to the Sunset staff, um, but obviously we, we support the renewal of this agency for another dozen years or so. Uh, and we support um, uh, the idea of putting the BAC in, into statute and, and looking and trying to identify ways that it can be more robust in its process. We actually made a couple of suggestions yesterday in that regard, anything related to IT modernization, um, quality controls, data collection, all that sort of stuff, we sort of, we, we, we definitely support. In terms of opposing, Steve laid it out very well. Um, I'll just say it's in a slightly different way. Um, anything that shifts the regulatory burden and the associated financial risks to the charities we oppose. And we think some of the recommendations that the staff make may uh, do that. Um, on the budget issue and that in in the you know a fix for that, we're we're generally neutral on that, but that involves money and it just reminds me of um, the former Senator Russell Long, who was a longtime chairman of the Senate Finance Committee in Washington, who said, don't tax you, don't tax me, tax that fellow behind the tree. And the tree in this case are the funds that are already generated in the form of prize fees. There are resources there. Um, typically, that's somewhere around roughly $30 million a year, which is equal to the amount that uh, are net proceeds for charities. So another way to think about that is that the tax from state and local government is equal to the net rep, uh, the, the, the net profit that the charities generate. And I don't know of another business in our state that we tax at nearly 100%. So when you think about it in that context, that's significant. So there are resources there. And to that point, there's one thing that I think that the staff left out. There are two problems that face charitable bingo today. One is um, limited by what the law allows, and that's new products. Uh, to attract um, new customers. Um, if you look at the charitable bingo numbers, the, the the two most important numbers that I pay attention to are what's attendance on an aggregate basis uh, and what are the net proceeds? What is the money that the charities retain? And if you look at attendance, and if you go back as far as 2007, Attendance peaked at about 17.9 million. Last year, it was 10 million 80,000. 10 million, 10.08 was a topographical error in the, in the draft report. Um, that's a 44% decline, and that's continuing. It's slight decrease year over year from 22 to 23. Um, we hope that some of the tools that the legislature provided us um, uh, helped stem that tide just a little bit. But we have an awareness problem. We've done our own market research. We test marketed advertising. Um, we know that we know what the issue is, and that's awareness. It's simple awareness. We're not top of mind in the consumer um, with the consumer when it, they think about, oh, what are we going to go do tonight? We compete with too many other things. Um, we've tried to address it uh, through some 
self-help measures. We've seen solid results from that, but it just leads me to think that we need to form some type of public-private partnership that will allow us to t attack that awareness issue so that we can then attack the larger issue, which is attendance. Um, and we hope that um, through the BAC and other ways um, that you can work with us on a way to you know, figure out how to crack that legislative nut and, and address that. I noticed in the budget presentation that the lottery's uh, budget for advertising is about $10 million. Uh, we could do a lot of damage and really a lot, meaning a lot of good if we had 10% of that. Uh, we test marketed at uh, um, using about $100,000, 1% of what the lottery budget has. We got good results. We know that we can have an impact. We just don't have the scale. And it's in a state with as many media markets that we have in Texas, um, as big as it is, we need to try to achieve some type of scale. So I plant that seed with you commissioners uh, so that you'll it'll bubble up in your thinking as you move forward and consider these issues. We know your job prom it is exclusively to be the regulatory cop on the beat. We hope that maybe in the future we can adjust that so that um, that dynamic has changed a little bit. With that, I'll shut up and answer any questions you might have. Commissioners, any questions? Okay, none. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Appreciate your time. Okay, uh, next item is the internal auditor's report. Darlene, your item. Good morning, commissioners. For the record, my name is Darlene Brown and I'm your internal auditor. In your notebooks is a summary of activities. We recently completed the internal audit of change management related to legislative actions. The focus of this audit was the identification, tracking, and implementation of bills that impact the agency. We conducted that internal audit, uh, concluded that the internal controls are generally effective with best practices. We want to commend the Governmental Affairs Division staff and all agency divisions for ensuring that the legislative actions are fully implemented in a timely manner. We also want to provide kudos to the Charitable Bingo Operations Divisions for their detailed project plans. They are outstanding and should set the standard for the other divisions to follow with their documentation. We're in the process of auditing the agency's procurement and contracting activities, and we're also completing the Retailer Incentive Bonus Program audit over the next two months. Sorry about this. Um, we also updated the internal audit charter to reflect the new global standards by, promulgated by the Institute of Internal Auditors that it take in effect in January 25. Our firm is being proactive and getting ahead of the curve and implementing all the changes that are required, and this is one of them. We provided the audit committee with our annual independence statement. This is one of the new requirements that take effect next year. Um, we have a summary of it in your notebook. We've also been working on preparing the uh, annual internal audit plan for fiscal year 25, and we'll be bringing that to you at the next meeting for approval instead of today. So this concludes my report for today, and I'll be happy to address any comments or questions you might have. Hey, commissioners, any discussion? Do you have any comments from our audit committee, subcommittee? Not had time to meet yet, so no. Okay, well, we know that Amy has his hands full, and <laughs> so do you, but uh, <laughs> gratefully uh, that y'all will have that discussion, so okay. Darlene, thank you very thank you. much. Okay, uh, next item is the bingo director's report. LaDonna. Morning, commissioners. For the record, I'm LaDonna Castanuela, director of the Charitable Bingo Operations Division. The notebook materials include CBOD's output metrics for our licensing, accounting, compliance, and audit activities for April and May through the run date of May 21st. I have a couple more items I want to discuss with you. The first one is going to be an action item. 
and it's in your notebooks. You have a draft bingo advisory opinion in response to a request made by Kim Kiplin on behalf of All Saints Texas LLC. All Saints is a licensed distributor. The request was received on April 15th and by rule the commission's response is due within 60 days or no later than next Friday, June 14th. The request is very straightforward. The question is, may a licensed distributor receive or take back bingo equipment or bingo supplies from a licensed authorized organization, not a licensed manufacturer or another licensed distributor? And if so, under what circumstances? As explained in the draft advisory opinion, the answer is no. The BEA section 2001-407C states a licensed distributor may not receive or purchase by purchase or otherwise bingo equipment or supplies from a person other than a licensed manufacturer or another distributor. The draft opinion also includes some discussion of code construction regarding the terms take back and purchase or otherwise and explains that although we do have some rules that may suggest a different answer, an agency rule may not contradict an authorizing statute. Finally, because the answer to the first question is no, there is no need to address the second question. Today I'm requesting approval to finalize an issue. The bingo advisory opinion is drafted and I'm available to answer questions. Okay. Do you have any comments? Nope, move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Donna, thank you. Uh, are you I have one more item. Okay. Uh, I want to give you an update on the BAC nominations. Of course, you heard from uh, Trace earlier. Um, so on Monday, May 6, we sent an email blast to all contacts listed in our licensing database with a message from me soliciting nominations for the 2025 BAC members to represent all of the required interest groups, including the public, conductors that are not licensed commercial lessors, conductors that are licensed commercial lessors, commercial lessors, licensed manufacturers, and licensed distributors. I also reached out to Texas Municipal League, the Texas Association of Counties, the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement, and the Texas Catholic Conference of Bishops in hopes of finding persons interested in serving on the BAC specifically to represent the public. The deadline for nominations was 5 o'clock Central Standard on Tuesday, May 28th, and as of today, 13 nominees have met the applicable eligibility requirements of Rule 402-102-C. We do have eligible nominees interested in representing all six interest groups, including four eligible nominees who are interested in representing the public. As required by rule, those nominees who have been determined to be eligible have been forwarded to each commissioner. When and if the last application is determined eligible, I will forward it to you also. When I know that you have all the eligible nomination forms, I will send you confirmation and a complete list with their requested interest groups. The rule also allows but does not require each commissioner to interview nominees. If you wish to conduct interviews and would like some help with logistics or scheduling, please let me know and my staff and I can help. And that concludes my comments. Okay, LaDonna, thank you. Cindy, do you have any thoughts? A, a quick thank you to Commissioner Smith because he um, he helped facilitate some of the outreach to find public members. So thank you for that. Um, other than that, um, we don't really have the process completely down yet, but we will be interviewing candidates and reaching out. Um, LaDonna did send an email to all of the people that qualified for the positions and let them know that commissioners may be reaching out to them to interview them. So at least they're aware that if they get a phone call that, that you know, it's Perfect. not some sort of a scam. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, we, um, Cindy, will look to you to lead to coordinate any uh, official uh, organization. If you do want us to participate in how you do, feel free to direct and we're okay. all collectively will participate. Sure. And and anybody that's interested will uh, will will be in touch somehow. Some some way. We haven't figured it all right. out yet. Right. It's kind of a new world, but yes. Well, we have uh, plenty of time before the August meeting. So Madonna, thank you, Cindy. Thank you. OK, uh, can I just know just note yeah. real quick. Sure. I know great outreach work. Besides re reach out to the Texas uh, Catholic Conference of Bishops. I was disappointed that no bishops <laughs> applied 
for the BAC, but we still have <laughs> still have time, I guess. <laughs> uh, didn't do his job on that, right? That came from you. <laughs> and we do have uh, Steve Fanolio, who is here to visit on uh, this item. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, for the record, my name is Stephen Finolio. I'm an attorney in Austin and I represent the Texas Charity Advocates and I'd filed a uh, appearance slip on the uh, advisory opinion. Uh, and I think the advisory opinion is wrong for one simple reason. I'm reminded I'm old enough to remember who Paul Harvey was and the rest of the story. Since 1967, Texas has adopted the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, chapter two of that applies to goods bingo products are clearly goods. And under a variety of provisions in the Uniform Commercial Code, a buyer has a right to inspect and reject non-conforming or defective products. The BAC opinion uh, states they don't have those rights under the Uniform Commercial Code. And my position, my client's position is the UCC trumps specifically addressing goods. You know, it's amazing or interesting that uh, the Lottery Commission will take back non-conforming product, and they do that on a somewhat regular basis. Uh, full tabs or uh, scratch-offs are non-conforming, uh, and when that's pointed out, they immediately take them back, credit the uh, convenience store for that, ship a different product. So the UCC has those same uh, rights for a buyer. Uh, UCC uh, 2206 uh, specifically addresses non-conforming product and the buyer's right to inspect and reject. UCC 2513 uh, reinforces that buyer's right to inspection of the goods. And again, non-conforming or defective products, the buyer can return. Uh, and obtain conforming product. Uh, UCC 2501, there's an insurable interest in goods, including non-conforming goods. Uh, UCC 2508 uh, gives a right to cure by seller of improper tender or delivery. So in this uh, situation where a seller does deliver a non-conforming or defective product, and that does happen in the bingo world, where specifically pull tabs have uh, been found to be non-conforming to what they were approved by the, either the agency or now a third party uh, independent lab. Uh, so with all of that said, uh, I think the full story is, yes, uh, the agency is correct or the staff, the lawyers are correct. Uh, if it's just, well, we can't sell it, uh, we want you to take it back. That's not covered or not allowed under the UCC, but if it's a defective product, and I'm assuming all of us have consumed products that were defective and you take it back to the seller and seller uh, because of UCC, if for no other reason says, well, we'll take that non-conforming or defective product back, give you your money or give you another product that is uh, conforming. So with that said, uh, we do oppose the, the blanket uh, statement in the uh, advisory opinion because it doesn't address the whole story, uh, specifically where there are non-conforming or defective goods that have been, uh, a good was ordered, uh, but on inspection, it's not what was ordered. And in some cases, it's been the case that the product is defective and the charity shouldn't be selling that product uh, would create problems with its own customer base. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And I did make a comment during uh, the rules review about this. This came up uh, back in, I believe it was April, and pointed out that the UCC does have provisions concerning the return of uh, defective or non-conforming product. Okay. Commissioners, any discussion, questions? Steve, we are always grateful to see you here and and uh, our, our former chairman would consider this a, a banner day to have the Steves uh, both speak at the same meeting. So uh, 
I, we're, we're grateful for you being here. So thank you very much. I've got my one eye on you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Okay. Next item, uh, we're going to hear from our executive uh, director, the esteemed uh, Ryan. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. For the record, my name is Ryan Mandel, Executive Director. A few updates for you on agency business activities and the national lottery industry. First, uh, I want to let you know that I think my transition to Executive Director is going well. Um, I had an open house with employees a couple of weeks ago. A number of people across the agency took that opportunity to meet with me. I really enjoyed chatting with all of them. I've also had a number of meetings with our vendor and retailer community, and they've been very welcoming. So I want to let you know that process has been going well. Next, in our last meeting, I listed a number of reviews and audits the agency has undertaken. Uh, I did want you to know that currently the agency is undergoing the statutorily required security study. Government Code 466020 requires the executive director at least every two years to employ an independent firm to conduct a comprehensive security study of all aspects of lottery security with 12 specific areas that, areas that must be reviewed. The 2024 security study is currently being conducted by Barry Dunn. We'll conclude later this summer. There'll be a briefing provided to you in the fall. Next, the Texas Veterans Commission announced on May 20th that it awarded $44 million in Fund for Veterans Assistance Grants among 181 organizations across the state. So the largest amount of grants at one time by the TVC. And as you know, funding for those grants is generated primarily by the Texas Lottery's games designed for veteran support. So we're all thrilled to see that announcement. Turning to the national lottery industry, IGT reported to us last week that since the beginning of our fiscal year, the Texas lottery has had the highest scratch ticket sales in the country, pulling ahead of Florida and California. Our lead is small, but I want to continue to highlight how many lotteries are struggling nationwide with year over year comps given the high jackpots from last year. Texas has done better, relatively speaking, than most. All signs point to this being the second most successful year in our long Texas lottery history. Now you know about the organization NASPL, the North American Association of State and Provincial Lotteries, which serves as a platform for data sharing and communication among lotteries around the continent. A few updates about Texas and that organization. First, I'll be attending my first NASPL directors meeting later this month, so I'm very excited about that. In July, NASPL will hold its annual professional development seminar, PDS. In my opinion, PDS is the best educational lottery conference in the country. It's well attended by lottery staff. Texas will have a sizable contingent as usual this year. I've been named the chair of what's called the finance track. So that's the seminars and classes for lottery CFOs and other financial staff. So I look forward to serving that position for a while, ably assisted by Sergio and Annika and others on our staff. Nashville PDS is also the conference where the winners of the prestigious Powers Award are announced. Named for the late Ed Powers, the so-called father of US lotteries, the Powers Award is given to individuals who have provided significant contributions to exceptional job performance. We have had a number of Powers Award winners on staff over the years, including a number of current employees, Robert Trelawney, Bob Beard, Joan Codal, Conchita Daniel, Del Bowersock, and Julie Terrell. This conference and award will occur in July, but I did get confirmation last week that Texas Lottery has another winner. I'd like to announce that winner today by reading the nomination I submitted on their behalf. Nelda Trevino is the Governmental Affairs Director of the Texas Lottery. Before the Texas Lottery was formed, the Texas The Texas Comptroller appointed Nelda to serve as a member of the Texas Lottery Implementation Task Force. She played a key role in the startup of the Texas Lottery and has now worked at the Texas Lottery Commission for over 30 years. <laughs> Nelda has the uncanny ability to see the big picture perspective on every major issue that affects the agency. She knows what every major legislative player in Texas thinks, often before they think it. Nelda sees around the corner in a way that anticipates legislator and stakeholder concerns and makes the agency better. With that knowledge, she makes sound recommendations for action with a keen understanding of risk, all the while operating with the highest standards of professionalism and integrity in her work. Nelda provides insightful interpretation of comments and actions of stakeholders outside and inside the agency. She works closely with the executive management as well as the Texas Lottery Board. 
Her teamwork and guidance to the volunteer commissioners puts them and our organization in a position to succeed. She's an incredibly effective communicator, consistently conveying the agency's position with clarity and conviction. Nelda guides the agency through the legislative session every two years, working with her staff to understand, provide comments on, and ultimately implement legislation. In between sessions, she and her staff stay busy providing updates to legislative members and staff, working on major projects like interim committee hearings and the recent sunset review of the agency, and otherwise providing strategic guidance. Nelda also provides effective stakeholder engagement by working with retailer groups across the state. Nelda understands the lottery industry, which means that she knows what success looks like for retailers, lobbyists, vendors, and the agency. Ultimately, Nelda's experience and acumen make her an outstanding governmental affairs director whose contributions have been key to the lottery success throughout its entire history. Her exceptional job performance make her an excellent candidate for the Powers Award. So congratulations, Nelda. That's all I had to report. Okay, uh, commissioners, any discussion? Great job. Always. Yeah, Nelda, uh, I know this is uh, Ryan's uh, report, but I'll I'll, I'll speak uh, to you here for a second. One, that that award is obviously incredibly uh, significant, and all of the previous award winners that are part of the organization for you to join that esteemed group is uh, one overdue, but two, it reinforces the the quality of the employees that are here that are focused that uh, deeply care and contribute. And and Nelda, you are a role model uh, to your uh, fellow coworkers, and definitely someone that, on behalf of all of our commissioners, uh, rely on and are grateful for your uh, ability to guide and, and provide insight and just give us general stewardship that we would be uh, lost at sea without. So Nelda, thank you very much for what you do every day. So uh, go to Ryan, as this is your report. Um, we know collectively all the commissioners that you have done a, a tremendous job in the uh, several weeks now that you have held the uh, the, the position, and it's one that uh, was earned, one that was justified that you're sitting in that chair. But uh, you know the the comments that we the commissioners are receiving from folks, uh, you know, internal to this building, across the Capitol, across the state, are nothing but just quality in, in terms of the appointment uh, that you've received and uh, the work that you're doing, it just reinforces the decision made by uh, this body to, to have you there. And uh, you just provide an incredible amount of just reassurance to, to guide. So we're, we're grateful that you're there and we look forward to your uh, continued uh, reports uh, when we uh, continue to meet. So Ryan, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, uh, next item is our enforcement cases, Bob. Thank you, commissioners. I'm Bob Beard, general counsel, and this item contains 13 cases today, 12 lottery and one bingo case. Tabs A through M. Uh, these are cases where a lottery or bingo licensee violated a statute or rule or an applicant did not qualify for a license. In most of these cases, either the respondent failed to appear at the hearing and it proceeds by default or staff and the respondent reaches settlement in the form of an agreed order. We have both these types of cases today. Tabs A through I are all non-sufficient fund lottery, retailer, license revocations handled in a single order. Each case was presented to the State Office of Administrative Hearings for revocation of the retailer license because the licensee failed to have sufficient funds in the bank account to cover an electronic fund transfer to the commission's account. In each case, the licensee failed to appear at hearing and the judge remanded the case to the commission to handle its default matter. Tabs J through L are all lottery agreed orders. Uh, tab J is a uh, employee uh, micro scratching case. This is where we have an employee of a retailer who is making very small scratches on scratch tickets to determine which were winners and which were not. Of course, that's a violation 
And uh, this is a 30-day suspension, and I did want to note, as stated in the order in this matter, that uh, the uh, retailer terminated this employee. Uh, tabs K and L are both uh, debit card cases. Uh, and in both of these cases, the store's policy is that when a, a person purchases lottery tickets with a debit card, they must buy additional store merchandise. Of course, that's not allowed either. Each of those cases has a 10-day suspension. Tab M is a bingo agreed order. Uh, this is for a, a bingo worker who uh, received deferred adjudication for forgery, a state jail felony, and was placed on probation for a period of four years. That would normally be a disqualifying uh, uh, event, uh, but there is a provision where uh, uh, the agency can can issue a term you know, provisional uh, registration. So this uh, this worker has provided three letters of recommendation and has agreed to a restricted license, where essentially they they may deliver prize money and sell bingo cards and act as an usher or salesperson, but they're not responsible for recording those transactions. And that concludes my presentation. You may take all these orders up in a single vote if you like, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Commissioners, any discussion? Uh, is there a motion to approve orders tabs A through M? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you, Bob. Uh, next item is our public comment. And there's no additional public comment. No additional public comment. Okay. Anyone want to speak public comment? Just to make sure. Okay. Glad to hear it. All righty. Uh, next item is um, we are going to go into executive uh, session. So I move that the Texas Lottery Commission go into executive session to deliberate personal matters and receive legal advice. Second. I second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Votes affirmative, and we, the Texas Lottery Commission, go into executive session at 11:07 on June 6, 2024. All righty, uh, the Texas Lottery Commission is out of executive session. It is 11:40. Uh, we have some action items to take. Uh, is there a motion? We have sound. Got it. We're good. Send Mr. It. Chairman, uh, the reason we went into executive session was to discuss LaDonna Castanuela's annual performance evaluation. And um, I, I think we all agree that your performance has been stellar and you've had a tough year with sunset on your plate and everything else that you have and you've you've filled vacant positions with good people and all in all have done just an excellent job and as a result i move that we approve the employee performance evaluation for ladonna custom and uh provide her with a five percent salary increase effective july 1st 2024. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion approved. And do you have any comments you wanna? This great job. It's a, it's actually an absolute pleasure working with you. You make my job very easy. <laughs> you make everybody's job easy. Additional comments? Thank you, Adana. Great year. Burned some year and I think you've done a great job. So thank you. Thank Clark. you very much for this recognition today. I do want to let you know I am still having a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well deserved. <laughs> yeah, LaDonna, I wish there was more people here to, you know, uh, <laughs> to hear about what, um, you know, the, 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 what our commission thinks about you in terms of, you know, what we're able to do and provide. And just we're, we're grateful for your hands on approach and just your, everything that you do is just beyond wonderful and we're we're really grateful so thank you LaDonna and uh, you give us a, a lot of faith and confidence in bingo that uh, was um, surely missed for years so thank you 
Okay. Uh, is there anything else that we need to discuss? Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all, everyone. <laughs>